Am I on? Thank you. On? Okay. All right. We're so glad you guys are here today, and we're so excited to get to share this with you guys. Um, so before we dive in, I just want to share a little bit about how this kind of came about. So my name is Summer. Tiffany introduced me. Um, I have two little girls, and they are seven and ten now. They're not so little. And I've been married for 12 years to my husband, Danny. And about six years ago, I attended a workshop. And Missy and I, my sister, she's my sister, if you guys don't know that, um, we went together. And I really didn't know what to expect. I just knew that my friend said, you guys have to go. So I didn't know what to expect, but God had a plan, and I trusted that plan. And at the event, we learned a ton of different principles on how to have a more biblical home. But the one that stood out the most to both of us was specifically, they called it the table principle. So we've kind of renamed it as we've started to share it. Um, So it was on my heart to share this with other women. And they actually encouraged us to do that. But I kept waiting until my life was perfect to share with others because I thought I had to have this perfect life if I was going to share this. And so I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And then I realized, like, it's never going to be perfect. Life is hard. Marriage is hard. Right? Parenting is hard. And so 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, we just did it. And um, we got to present this at the church for a women's night. And then we had said, like, this would be so good for mops. Right? We're all... It can be really tough to have dinner at the table with little kids. So we're going to give you guys lots of nuggets. Um, I just want to explain a little bit about my dinner table. So I have, being two girls, a lot of chatty Cathy's. Is this too loud? Okay. I feel like there's just not as many of us in the room. Um, A lot of chatty Cathy's at my table. But if you know my husband, he is a man of very few words. Like conversation is not his thing. He does not enjoy just sitting down and talking and, you know, sharing about his day. So implementing the things that we're going to teach you guys about tonight has been such a blessing for my family. It has blessed us tremendously. Um, So we talk more, we laugh more, we've gotten to know each other more. My husband's enjoying more of that time and my girls are learning communication skills just by being at the dinner table. So it's really, really been a big blessing and we've made more time to connect as a family. We've made it a priority. So mealtime is that opportunity for families to build their relationships. So today is about getting really, really intentional about that sacred time. So I have this up. This is if I could summarize today into one sentence. Time spent at the table satisfies a cry of the human heart because a lovingly prepared table is a place where the presence of God dwells and individual relationships are established. I don't know why I get so emotional every time <laughs> she I do cries this. every it time. Matter, and I don't even have a nursing baby to blame it on, so I've got to figure out something else to blame it on. Um, so, like Summer said, this was actually introduced to us in a two-day workshop. It's all in a book by Debbie Titus called The Home Mentoring Experience. And so, for those of you who don't know, I'm a boy mom, so she's the girl mama. I've got both boys. I have a four and seven-year-old, and this actually was introduced to me at a time when I was really struggling in my marriage. That's probably why I get emotional. (laughs) Okay, so um, this truly was just one one of the things that God used during that time to just help me. And so I'm going to be real. (laughs) Coming to the table during that time was not easy. Like, it was awkward. There was tension. It was just hard. But I did it anyways. I just felt that God called us to do it. So I showed up. I had little ones at the time. But God, God used it. He used this among many other things to do a major work in my marriage. And that's a whole other issue if you don't know my husband. Um, but today, truly, we want you to walk away with something. So whether it's something that you walk away and you're able to apply right away. Or maybe you were meant to be here to go mentor others in this this concept. So whatever it is, maybe God's preparing you. Maybe you don't walk away and you can't immediately apply something, but maybe he's preparing you for something. So today, truly, we just pray that the Holy Spirit fills this room and that God is able to speak to each and every one of you. 
Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about today's home environment, right? So the typical family no longer has meals at the table together um, due to like just busy lifestyles, right? So after school activities, it could be our work schedules, just plain being tired, right? Um, some meals are had like in the drive-thru or after the drive-thru, watching TV. It could be with tablets and electronics at the, at the table. Um, so, and when we do this, we are missing out on time to connect as a family and build relationships. So we know this can, can be, this can be completely hard to find time to do. Like this, right? Life is crazy. It can be hard. And we totally understand that. So in order for this to happen, you have to be willing to make a conscious decision or a conscious choice to adjust your busy lifestyle to fit in meals at the table with your family. We're going to give you some very tangible ways to do that because sometimes that can be like, okay, that just seems too overwhelming, right? But your family will reap the rewards from making time to sit at the table together. Um, and I, one of our first speakers, I don't remember her name, she talked about those, how important the white spaces on your calendar are, and that has stuck with me. I have always been the one to fill up our calendar, and my husband is like, please stop planning stuff for us, right? So I have really like looked at the white spaces on my calendar in a different way. Like I never look, like keep those clear. Be as, as, as diligent as you can about keeping white spaces on your calendar because that leaves family time to just connect and to just be, right? Um, okay. Okay, so we want to search share a little research. So we are gonna give you practical sides, but we really want you to see the importance and the value of this. So studies have actually shown that meal times play a crucial role in the lives of teenagers. Now I know we don't have teenagers yet, but what we do now and the things that we establish now will lead into that time. And so they did a research about adjusted teens and they defined adjusted teens, teens as those with better relationships with their peers, more academic motivation, and few, if any, problems with drugs and depression. And they said it was those adjusted teens ate meals with their family on average five days a week. So researchers, they speak of this common factor that has undermined the well-being of our young people today. And the missing elements in our families is that our lifestyle no longer makes time or room for eating meals together. Um, and just the tricky subjects are more easily addressed at the dinner table because sitting at the dinner table, a huge part of that is communication. And that helps us with raising emotionally healthy children. And so the last one I wanna share is that drugs, drug use, sex, violence, and emotional stress were all less likely in households where the parents were present at crucial times, especially those meal times. So, so mm, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm still going. <laughs> like, hold on. <laughs> okay, so I want we wanted to talk about the olive tree, and I if we're, I don't think a lot of us are familiar with with an olive tree. We don't have those around here, but I added a picture because I love this scripture, and I'm actually going to read it. It's from Psalms 128, one through three. Blessed are all who fear the Lord who walk in obedience to him. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house, and your children will be like olive shoots around your table. And so I didn't know what olive shoots were, so I kind of looked this up and did a little research on, on the olive tree. So basically olive trees, they actually propagate by sending up shoots from the existing root system. So these little shoots, if you look at the tree, this one's a little blurry, it's hard to see, but basically imagine all these tiny little trees around the, the main tree. And the coolest part about an olive tree is that these shoots don't pop up from the visible fruit, like typically fruit sitting on the ground, that's kind of where the new one stems. These actually come out from the unseen roots of the parent tree. And if you think about that, Without the healthy roots, there's no tree, there's no fruit, and there's no cycle of life. So we get to be those healthy roots that are gonna allow our children to sprout up like olive shoots all around us with those healthy roots. Go for it. 
<laughs> okay. All right, so why is eating at the table so important, right? A lot of people just don't understand the importance of it. So I'm going to throw a little scripture into this, okay? So in the New Testament, Jesus referred to himself as the bread of life. In John 6, verse 48, he says, I am the bread of life. So when family and friends gather around a prepared table, Jesus is present at the table. That is why it is so important for us to have time as a family at the table. Um, in Revelation 3, verse 20, it says, the presence at the table is Jesus, the bread of life. He promises that if we will open the door of our hearts to him, he will come and dine with us. Jesus said, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. So here's, here's a few benefits of eating at the table other than Jesus being at your table, right? Because that's, that's like the number one benefit, I would say. Um, but love is expressed at the table. The Lord is honored at the table. Character is developed at the table. Communication, you guys, is one huge aspect. When your kids start to get into those teenage years and they don't want to talk to you, being at the table, will start. they just start to be comfortable. It starts to be a place where they feel like they can talk and open up if we start this like young, right? Doesn't mean you can't if you have teenagers. Some people do have teenagers here. Doesn't mean you can't start now, right? They might hate it at first, but I think, do we have that statistic? We had the statistic at one point. Oh, it said like 80% yeah. of teens actually want to eat dinner at the table. They may not act like it, right? And they might be like grumpy about it. They actually want to eat dinner at the table with their family. Um, Can so, I add on? I'm gonna cut you yeah, off really quick. I think it wasn't, didn't you ask, remember the, the dad panel and you said like, how do I bring up hard subjects with my husband? And they said, have a regular time where you're just regularly talking. It's the same idea. This is a regular thing that we're coming to and that we're just, so for our kids and our husbands, they just know we're coming to the table. This is mm -hmm. the night we're coming to the table. And so whatever those subjects are, they're used to coming. It's not that like, okay, kids, we're meeting at the table to have this conversation or, you know, and same thing with our husbands. So that's what just popped in my head. It takes the pressure off, right? Like they're just regularly having those conversations. Um, the physical body is better nourished at the table, right? Uh, training is experienced in a natural way. So like our girls, right, are learning learning like serving their husbands, like serving others, right? And boys too um, can learn to help mom, things like that, and be helpful around the kitchen with their wife if you have, you know, a husband that will model that. Uh, and then children practice sharing and self-control. These are all things that I had no clue that my kids learned at the table until we learned these things that were shared with us. And so family members learn to serve one another at the table conversational skills. They're refined and they're practiced around the table. Respect is shown for one another as good manners are practiced around the table. Daily schedules can be discussed and that helps bring order to the family planning. Gratitude, gratefulness, praise, and appreciation for each other can be shared around the table. And the practice of proper table manners prepares our children for adulthood. So really, what other one activity could you name that has this many benefits? All right, so we're gonna have a little fun because we threw a lot at you guys. Um, <laughs> I am the very simple decorator at home. Summer has these really cute creative ideas but are budget friendly. So Summer's actually gonna share some cute ways to decorate your table, kind of reuse what you have and mix it all up, so. So for me, I love my table too. You want me to can hold the mic? Can, no, I, can you guys hear me? Here's my secret. Oh, okay. Here's my secret. 
My table is set generally very nicely, and then when dinner time comes, you guys ready for a laugh? I go, okay, everyone help mom take off the nice fancy dishes, and then we do paper plates. They don't eat on these. These are just, <laughs> I thought it was normal until I did the first not, table thing. Not normal. <laughs> they don't eat on these, so <laughs> we're gonna normalize this. Um, and everyone knows, and it's not my husband's favorite thing that I have the table d dressed up. So I'll usually like take things out for the season. And then after I've gotten like, you know, I love them, then I'll pull them back. So he's not bothered. He gets bothered. He doesn't want to have to move them. Right. Um, okay. So a centerpiece. And then I usually will just layer, layer my dishes. Okay. You can make it really simple. White plates. I always use white plates and you can literally get like a thing of 12 plates at market. What's the market world market right? World market cost plus or something. I just do white plates. Then I grab fun chargers that I can change out like this. I can use for fall. This I can use for Christmas. I do use it on my spring table too. So I layer my chargers with my white plate. If you really want to get fancy, you can add in some other layers, right? And even more. So these are a pack of like, actually they weren't a pack, but these were like in the Easter section for $5.99 half price. So these were $3. And I always have my table for, set for four because there's only four of us. So let's see if I can show you guys this. Missy, you might have to hold the bottom. So this is like what I would do if I wanted to dress it up a little for the spring. I do do a bowl. I brought one somewhere. Okay, and then sometimes I will add, I love yellow and blue. So I will do like a solid blue runner and just throw my blue on like this. So there are so many different combos that you can do that can make it fun and then you can reuse everything. So always runners are my thing. I will always just do like a simple white, um, I'll do a cake plate sometimes and just put something on the top or this I have and I'll interchange them all the time. So this is the first setting. If you want something a little more simple, I love these. For all the holidays. These are probably my very favorite. And so this with just a white plate looks really, really cute on the table. So if you want to keep it simple, you can do this for the holidays. You can add in more if you want, like yellow. Um, I even have cute little, sometimes I'll just buy like small little things. So you can add and layer it like this and make it fall. So see how different that is? Like, can we see it? I just, and literally I just, <laughs> these were like a pack for $1.99 of like eight at Hobby Lobby. So I always just grab random stuff and change it up. So, okay, I'm going to show you my um, other runner trick. This was the, my favorite that I learned. Um, I do. Okay, you could take two runners. them and act like they're the same color, but they're not. So I don't use these together any longer. Do you keep your runners up when you guys keep your paper plates? I always keep my runners up. That's why they have paint all over them and my because my kids will paint on the table. So Dylan sits at the side with the runner and she hates it. She's like, you guys don't have to have this in your way all the time. <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> Okay, this is one of my favorite ways to like change it up too. So just two runners. I mean, these are double layered, you know, it could literally just be as simple as two regular, two regular. And I just saw on Mary, Mary and Martha, they have like a, a runner that does two sided. So you could like flip it over. I thought that was pretty cool. That is really smart. So, and then I would just put my settings. Like if you had six, right, you'd do like your four and then your five and six. And then the last thing I'll show you is just like how I would dress it up for holiday. So holiday, you can keep it really, really simple if you want, gold chargers, and these can go for Thanksgiving, these can go for fall, like you can do a lot with gold. They can go for parties if you do parties. Um, I like a little rustic in mine, so I will usually add like more texture, and I would add this with the gold for Christmas. Hold on, now I'm gonna take these off. So I just have runners of all, like, different, I do tans, I do blues, and then I can change them up. Um, this is a runner that I like even for fall. Like the grays look really fun when you do tans and pumpkins and stuff with them. Okay, last runner, 
And then I'm thinking, okay, did I get all the combinations I was gonna show you guys? Okay, and when I find my runners, here's the biggest thing, I don't iron. So I want runners that I can wash and dry and stick on my table. So you, you have to like watch. And leave in the washer for six hours exactly. and then refluff three times in the dryer. <laughs> totally, totally. So the soft materials, you can usually just like throw them in the dryer and then you don't have to iron anything. Or you could, yeah, you could, what, I, I de-wrinkle in the dryer so you could do that, but I just try to avoid all of that. So red, and you could even keep the little gold ones if you wanted to, if you wanted to dress it up a little bit, but I'm gonna do these without it. This does not look very nice because it's, <laughs> I'm doing this fast, hold on. I'm missing one white, and we'll just leave it like this. Okay, and then I will usually just grab like, okay, this is, Hold on. This is <laughs> this is a bread dish that I literally had and was like, okay, what could I use for a centerpiece? And then I just took red like Christmas hydrangeas, and there's my centerpiece. That's it. I and I just mix stuff around all the time, so I'm always reusing stuff, and you're not having to buy a bunch of stuff. And I always get these like if they're on sale at Hobby Lobby for like 50% off. Then I just load up on them. Home Goods, Hobby Lobby is usually where I get most of my decor. And then you can change it for the seasons. And your table's just a little more welcoming, right? When you've got like a little, a little bit of stuff to it. You don't even have to go all out with the runners. You could literally just put like a charger and a plate and it's still a little more inviting, right? Some people go all out with napkins and all that on there. I don't ever do napkins. We do paper for all that <laughs> at our house. So, all right. Thank you. Yeah, we'll leave it so that way you guys can mess with it. Ask her how she comes up with these ideas. I don't know. That is not, I say I did not get the gift of creativity. I just call her and go, what can I do? <laughs> and then she'll tell me. Okay, so um, we've kind of talked about the importance and the benefits of eating at the table, but right now we want to focus on how to bring more joy to your table and how to build those closer relationships with your family. So every human soul cries for two essential needs love and peace. And when those two vital things are not met, a lifelong search begins. And it can take people into some pretty dark places. The home is the central system in which the human development occurs. So for this reason, we as moms, we have to be aware and intentional about the design of our home. This includes our schedule, it includes our activities and just the comfort of our home. Having a plan to provide this positive growth in the home can just have amazing results. So it is up to us to provide that peace and love. In Proverbs 14.1, it says, uh, I missed that, there it is. Uh, a wise woman builds her house and a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. I'm going to say this without getting emotional, but this, I never understood this scripture until I realized how much I was tearing down my home. So I was like, I, I don't get it, but I wanted this home. I wanted this, oh, close relationship. I wanted my husband to talk to me and like actually want to come talk to me and my kids to have this and have a close relationship. But I was a screamer. M, recovering, recovering screamer. <laughs> we grew up in a household and I just exuded this like stressful environment. I was yelling, I was overwhelmed, I was exhausted and I, I was her. I was the one tearing down my house when I wanted the opposite thing. And so it goes back to that, like where can we have more white spaces? So if I'm not overwhelmed, I'm not gonna scream as much. I'm. I'm overwhelmed and stressed, and so my reaction is to scream. And so whatever it is for you, where can you look at your schedule, the comfort of your home? How can you be the one that builds the home that you want? 
And that's what we're gonna look at today. We're gonna look at what do you want out of your home? Do you want those close relationships? Do you want your husband to come home and look at his home as like a sanctuary where it's like. <sighs> that doesn't mean it has to be clean. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, just more that feeling. You know you walk in places and you feel the tension or you walk in places and you feel really relaxed? What do you want your home to feel like? And so that, that one really hit me hard. Um, so let's get practical about three things that you can do at your table. We made it really easy. We're gonna share three Ps. We want you to make your table a place of priority, a place of pleasure, and a place of participation. I'm gonna go back really quick to the Proverbs woman because I too, have been that woman and in recovering. I was actually the first one to cry at our workshop because when they said that, it literally hit me like, oh my gosh, like I am literally like pushing my husband away. Like, why would he want to come home to this? Who wants to come home to like, I describe myself as like the Tasmanian devil. I was like, I gotta do this and I gotta do that. And I, oh my gosh, and I need another coffee and another shot of espresso. And he was like, just slow down. Like, I wouldn't just sit with him. Like, he just wanted me to like sit and how was your day? Like, I was like, there's no time for that. I have to do a thousand things, you know? And then I was always stressed and then I was frustrated at him because he wasn't seeing how stressed I was and wanting to help me. He's like, just go away probably. So it really hit me hard when I realized I was part of the reason, right? There's two in a marriage, but I was part of the reason that the home was not, I was the main reason actually, that the home was not a safe place for them to feel like peace. And I didn't want my kids to grow up that way. We grew up in a pretty rough house that was pretty chaotic. Um, and I didn't want that for my kids. So I that hit huge for me. And so that has been a huge part of it. I, we learned one thing at that workshop that if, cause like, I'm not really good at keeping like a super clean and tidy home, right? Like I'm pretty messy. I go from one project to the next. I mean, I was she at admits it now when we shared a bedroom, she always I said that I work. was the messy one, but now we know, <laughs> so true. we know. It's always been me. It's always been me. But I mean, I was like from a PTL meeting last night to mops today to doing a wedding tomorrow. Like I just have always been really busy. So one thing that they said was if you like, so I, my house will not always be clean, right? But ask your husband, what's one thing I can do when you come home that you'd be like, that just makes you feel better, right? Mm -hmm. I know my husband's one thing is our kitchen island that is usually covered. Like, cause the kids come home, that's where they're coloring, I'm cooking, my appointment book's out there, whatever it is, he likes that to be clear. So if I can do one thing every day and that's all I can get done in the day, the laundry might be piled on the bed. He, like that's the one thing I know makes a difference. So little things like that can just help to not, you know, to just have him feel like, oh my gosh, she thought of me. She cleared off the kitchen island. But you, know? you have to ask him. Yeah. Like maybe for your husband, it's he wants a snack. Like, cool, I can focus on one thing. It yeah. takes so much pressure off of you, but you have to ask him what that one thing is. Yeah, because they can't expect us to do it all, right? <laughs> so, okay, going back to the three Ps. Um, making the table a priority, okay? So we're gonna get into this a little more. We're gonna give you guys a little worksheet. We're gonna do a small breakout session, but clearing the clutter from the table is huge, right? So like, we don't eat like this because this is like fancy, right? So we, I mean, this is technically not clutter. This also prevents clutter from the table. Nobody puts their stuff there because they know mom likes her pretty table and there's no room for it. So it keeps the table clear and at dinner time, it's pretty simple to just take those off. But our dinner tables can become like our mail drop station. They can become, you know, our art station for our kids. Clear the clutter. Have a kid, one of your kids, or have your husband or whoever it is while you're cooking be the table clear, right? It may get messy, clear it off again. Um, I know we had one mom who said like they were remodeling and their table was like where they put everything. So they just kind of cleared like this area for her and her husband, it was just two of them, and this, they put a blanket over it. <laughs> they just ate at the table. It worked, right? Um, and then increase the number of meals that you can eat together. And when I say meals, if dinner doesn't work, breakfast, lunch, it doesn't matter, right? It could be a snack when your husband gets home from work. Just sit at the table as often as you can. If you're not doing any, maybe you can do one, right? Just increase them is, is what we're encouraging you to do. And then the occasional like pizza night and a movie in the living room, like make it fun. It's okay if you're not always at the table, but your kids know that's like a regular thing. Make it fun. It's okay to do that, you know? It's okay to come to Mops movie night with your family. It is okay. <laughs> and eat burgers that you did not have to cook. Uh, so the next one is to make your table a place of pleasure. So this can be, I guess I envision like, I want my husband to want to come to the table. 
I want my kids to be excited for dinner time and like they know that this is a time they get to tell about their day or whatever it is. So some really easy ones is play music. For some reason in my household, it really settles my husband. We play either oldies or country. Those are like two very neutral things. Um, or Christmas right now. <laughs> and I think you've done Christian, yeah. My husband, that he does not get settled with Christmas. I have to play that in my car. And then he gets in my car, he's like, why are you listening to Christmas music? It's like, okay. Um, and then speaking of pleasure, I'm just gonna add this, and I don't know where I had it before, but my, with the pandemic, it's changed things. My husband works from home. His office is about 12 feet away from the table. So expecting a guy to come out of the office from a really stress work, stressful work environment, what does it take him, 10 seconds to get to the table and switch into dad mode? And that he, that was really hard on us. So we finally, which is really sad because our dog just passed away, but we had finally figured out that if he walks the dog in between, it gives him like a, a like commute. His that's his commute, right? He, and commutes aren't de-stressing either though, because that's hard, but allow if he needs it, allow for time between work and family time to let them transition as whatever that looks like. Um, so preparing meals that your husband likes, I have a very picky eater. Sometimes I just want, <laughs> I just want something that everybody's willing to eat, but sometimes it's nice when you, when you think of him. And then I always have like overnight oats are super easy in my fridge and yogurt. Like those are my go-to if my kid won't eat, I'm like, cool, whatever. We're gonna make this meal, my husband's gonna like it and then you can eat, you know, this stuff. Um, including that nutritional food. So yes, like dino chicken are super easy, but I try oatmeal is a much better option, throwing some fruit in there. And it's, it's easy if you have it prepared ahead of time. Um, so providing that nutritional meals for your kids just allows them to experience new things. And it allows us to have that conversation that our bodies are our temples and how cool that you can teach them at a young age that. So maybe, um, oh, and I wanted to talk about picky eaters change up the utensils. I don't know what it was about toothpicks. In my household, my kid ate everything for two weeks with toothpicks. I was like, awesome. Then, then it was like uh, tongs for broccoli. I, I was like, okay, whatever's gonna get you to eat your tongue. He got our giant tongs out and he would eat his broccoli with those. <laughs> so I know it can be stressful and you're just like, so if you make it lighthearted, it goes back to that pleasure, right? If we're not stressed out about them not eat, like get creative, try to, you know, share with other moms ideas. And that's what today is going to be about. We're going to allow for that share time. So share um, if you guys have any good ideas and then maybe including a guest at your table. Maybe it's your mother-in-law. I love mine. Maybe you don't love yours, but it could, you know, whatever a neighbor, it could be, you know, Summer has this little neighbor um, that has had a really rough life and she invites her over and she gets to see that family dynamic. You can really be that to, to people who might not have that. Um, and then always edify one another. And edify was one of these words that we're like, let's change it. Let's simplify it. And we looked it up and we're like, nope. You have to keep this word. And I put the definition. Did I not put it up there? There wasn't a way to like break it down more simply. It Ugh, just edifies. I'm going to read like it. Just what it means. <laughs> to instruct and improve, especially in the moral and religious knowledge. Uplift, enlighten, and inform. Like that's what we can be doing at our table regularly. And I thought that was really cool. Okay. And so the last piece is a place of participation. So... This is what, I love this at our table. Like my kids know you're coming to the table and we are gonna talk and we're gonna chat and we're gonna have a good time. And we do, we probably have this in here, but I'm gonna skip ahead, no phones for mom and dad. My kids don't have phones yet. No phones, like we, no electronics, none of that. It is time to just connect and be with each other. And so here are some ideas to include and to make it a place of participation. Ask your children to help clear the table. Um, wipe it down maybe, even young children, they can like put out the napkins, right? Say so you have a two-year-old, like they can't do much. They could put the napkins on the table. They love to help. You'd be surprised if they're not doing it, how much they love to help. Um, and then just, so assigning simple tasks. And then oftentimes the table is a place where people first learn to pray aloud. So offering for, don't just, don't just always jump to pray or if dad prays, right? Don't just always have your husband pray or if you're the prayer, um, Make sure that you change it up, right? Or if you have like grandma over, or, you know, auntie over for dinner, ask them to pray. It's just kind of nice. It's where they're learning to pray. But I always give my kids a chance to pray. So who wants to pray today? Sometimes they'll jump up and be like, I do. And sometimes nobody wants to. And then I do. 
So, um, and that's what happens most of the time. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Okay, create family traditions. Talk to your kids and your family about what they want to do. They, they might have a different idea than you, you know, and you might really like their idea. Oh, we should share color meal days. The what? So one new tradition we found out from our friend Christy, <laughs> and her daughter went to college and was like, Mom, you know oh, yeah. it's not normal that people don't have a color day? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, honey. No, like not so a color day. Color Hold on, she botched day. that. Hold on. So on like Valentine's, the mom would make red dinner because it's Valentine's Day. All the food And on St. Patrick's Day, it'd be green dinner. Or Thanksgiving, it'd be like yellow dinner. And so she'd go to school and preschool and go, Mom, no, everyone she was didn't in college have... when she figured that out. Okay, whatever it was. She's like, Mom, Somebody everyone watched. didn't have red dinner last night. Like it was their family tradition. She just assumed everybody in the world had red dinner, you know? It was so like that's a just thing. one idea of whatever tradition you want to start. Like mine is my husband travels on Thursdays. And so that's my, I'm like, pick your own dinner. Everybody just gets to pick your own dinner. But it really came out of like, yes, I don't have to prepare a meal. But my boys love it. So Thursdays is pick your own dinner. And I didn't even realize I was starting a tradition by being lazy. So you can do it. <laughs> it's so perfect. <laughs> um, okay, and then traditions, you guys can start those like at any time, right? So your first step is to plan it. Second step is actually do it. And then repeat the ones that work for you guys. Um, and then, oh, conversation cards. This is my favorite. At our table, and this is our gift to you guys, at our table we have this cute little box that I actually got from Mary and Martha, and I think it's, it's like a prayer box. So we have prayers in there, but we have our conversation cards. So generally when we're getting ready for dinner, one of my kids will come up and they'll take the cards and they'll give everyone one, or sometimes it's three and we know we're going to be there for a while. But whatever, if they want to do three, we're usually down to do three, right? Unless we're rushing to get them to bed. But conversation cards are the easiest way if you have a family member that has a hard time talking to get them talking, get them out of their comfort zone. Some of the conversation cards are as simple as like, you know, name one thing that made you happy today, right? And then some of them can get a little deeper. Like the one in there is like, how can we pray for you? It is so fun to ask your kids, like, how can we pray for you? And the things that come up. So, and there's some really off the wall ones. Like there's a funny one in some of those that say like, if you could, if we could, if we had the budget to remodel one room in the house, what would it be? And I was like, this is random, but I wanted to ask them. It's kind of funny to think like, you know, they don't really understand the remodel thing, but like what room would you want to change? So some are lighthearted and some get a little deeper, but it gets them used to talking, to conversating. And that is what they do with mom and dad, right? So what happens when they have a problem at school? It's easier for them to talk to us about it because we have started opening those lines of communication. So there's also like empty nester cards, like Amazon has all these ones. There's all kinds, you know, they have... Um, I'm just so, they have couples cards too. So like, say you go on a date and you don't know what to say to your husband because sometimes that happens, right? When we have little ones at home, like conversation can get really tough. They have couples conversation cards, which are really good. That actually is where my husband and I had to start because we would go and we would just stare at each other. Like we were that bad when we were, we were both willing to work on our marriage, but it was like, okay, where do we start? Because I don't know what to say to you. And those, those really helped. And the roses and thorns, you could do this on a date night too or at the table, um, roses and thorns or highs and lows, right? What was one good thing that happened today and what was one bad thing? Or we usually throw in like, what did you learn or who did you help today? Or what's one nice thing you could do for someone tomorrow? Like we'll usually throw like a third thing or what made you laugh today? Mm -hmm. Those are always really happy, fun. Sad, silly. Happy, happy, sad, sad silly. Happy, sad, silly. Okay, I haven't heard of that one. Happy, sad, silly. So same idea, highs and lows. And then, oh, here's, here's my statistics that 80% of teens want to have dinner with their family. I was shocked by that. I really was. Um, and I think your rates might go up higher if they've always had dinner with you. Okay, so we're going to talk about priorities. So your priorities are where you spend your time and where you spend your money, right? So your family will reap the rewards of you choosing to adjust your busy lifestyle to fit the table in. If evenings don't work, like I said, you guys do lunch, do breakfast. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, just be willing to make adjustments and sacrifices to make time to be at the table. So we're gonna pass out a little, um, what's the name of that one? Uh, Return. 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 Okay, my plan for coming back to the table. We may not finish this because we don't have as much time this morning as we normally would, but you guys can take this home and this is something we're gonna give you guys a few minutes to talk about. Sometimes the overwhelm is like, I. We don't ever eat dinner as a family. I have no idea how I could fit that in. We have soccer five nights a week and we have this and we have that. But making a plan and just kind of looking at your schedule like here's our family values, right? Is like time to connect, 
but our calendar is not aligning with our family values. What do we need to cut out, you know? And I remember Shannon's dad saying, if he could go back and do anything, it would be less sports. And I hear families say that all the time. And we all think like our, our kids, you know, that's, they love it, they have fun, yes, but, but does that align with your family values to be gone all weekend or five, whatever the nights of the week is, you know? So we've had to look at that as a family and my kids don't do sports yet. We've done little things, but they don't do sports yet because I'm not willing to be gone three nights a week also because I work one night. We've just chosen for our family that doesn't work, so. But that doesn't mean we, you can't. It's, it's truly, yeah. we, and we're not judging anyone. Um, like me, I'm like, how many practices, how many games? Like, I wanna know, is it five? You know, is it like one practice, one game? Okay, I can do that. But it, you know, is it some families, they've decided they, the kids get to pick one sport a season. So they're not in like soccer and dance or, you yeah. know. So we are not up here judging at all. We are both We're hot just giving messes. ideas. Like, we yes. are just, we, here's what we want one step of improvement. Like what is one thing? Like I, I could go add music to my dinner, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> cool, check. Cool, great, you did that. And then look at this sheet, you know, in a few days, can you add another one? And then in a week or two, can you add another one? And that's how you're gonna get there. We don't expect you to go home and go from zero meals to five meals. Totally. Where can you put that in? Okay, so we're just gonna Some, take a little quiet time. I just wanted to share one more idea uh -huh. for sports because my kids like want to dabble, right? We want them to know what they're good at. We let them do one, one kid can do a sport at a time if they want to do soccer. Like Dylan can do soccer, but Danica's taking a break. Or Danica chose to do horse lessons. I can do that because that's at like four o'clock and I'm home for dinner. Um, I nine sports is another one because when she wanted to do soccer, I was like three practices, a Saturday game. Like how, how are we going to do that? But I nine sports had like one game and one practice together. So just little things that if that's something for your family that you want to do, some ideas that you can look into. I know eventually we'll be at the soccer. Okay, I think I had said that this sheet was like a discussion sheet, I realized. This is actually kind of like a reflection sheet. Like what does our dinner time look like? What are our priorities? So this is kind of like a do it yourself, fill it out. Then our last sheet is gonna be discussion. I, I just looked at it and realized. But yes, you could always take it home and fill it out if you really just need your social hour here, go for it. <laughs>
paging, Missy. <laughs> okay, so we know you guys may not have been able to finish this all, and that's okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I got this. Class, class. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> ah, see, it worked. <laughs> Peanut butter. Aha. Uh -huh. Knock, knock. Uh, what else do I got? Um, hip, hip. That table, it's not working. Hip, hip. All right, go. <laughs> okay, so you may not have been able to finish it. It is okay. We do encourage you to go home and I know it's hard to find quiet time, right? As soon as your kids are out from upstairs, but a quiet moment or just a moment to just fill it out and sit and reflect. And really, my, the biggest thing I can encourage you to say is like, it, is it aligning with our core values as a family, right? Like that, and sometimes that's hard to be like, what are our core values? Maybe your husband's willing to sit with you and like go over that, you know? Maybe you can share a little bit with him about it. Um, okay, so now we're gonna show you, is this where I'm at? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so now we're going to show you just how you're going to implement this. Okay. So we kind of showed you like how and what or why. So we're going to show you how. So there is, we talk about this being like the lie versus the truth. Okay. So the lie is that we believe that like where we eat and how we eat or what we eat doesn't matter at all. Right. And that, um, we rationalize it kind of by saying like, it's just, it's fine if we're just together, you know, that's all that matters. But the truth is that it does matter, right? That we're together. It really does. But it also matters that we make the practice to eat together around the table. That is the important thing that we're just trying to, to share with you guys, right? And, you know, the enemy would love nothing more than to come into our homes and busy them up with our schedules and, you know, music practice and dance lessons and dad's working late and whatever he can do to help us from not getting to the table because we can see the benefits, right? That God has for us coming to the table. So who's gonna try to come in and mess that up, right? And we know that. So if we can be aware of that, it helps us to kind of be like on our toes and be like, no, no, I'm gonna make this a priority, you know? Okay. Yeah, and think about it too. Where did, where did Jesus do most of his teaching with his disciples? Around the table, right? There's a reason, he modeled that for us. And that's what we're showing you guys today, like the biblical benefits as well as the truly practical benefits of meeting at the table. So, you know, we discussed where we should be coming to the table, but we kind of just briefly wanted to go over the how and the what we eat. So what we eat does matter. We talked about our bodies are our temples. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, it says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. But practically, physically, God made our bodies. Our brain is the central system of the human soul. It contains the thinking and the feeling capacity of a person. So if it is not well fed, it's not going to develop to its full potential. And I'm not judging anybody with the way you feel, feed your kids. My first one was such a good eater. My second one, holy moly, like, I'm like this is real, trying to get him. But as much as possible, offering those good, healthy choices to them, I try um, to talk to them about the colors of the food, teaching them like, oh, okay, you know, orange foods help your eyes. It helps you to see better. And so you can do that. In, different varying levels. As they get older, you can go into more details about exactly what parts of the body function from those. But as they're really young, just, just teach them. Like, this is going to help you, you know, we do a lot of like, you want to be strong like daddy, you got to eat, you know, whatever. Um, all right. Proverbs 9.2 says, she has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. So I know most of you guys are thinking like, the Bible tells me I can drink wine. I know that's what you guys got out of this. Like, see, it told me. But what I really wanted you guys to focus on this one is that she prepared. And so it shows that we should take time to plan ahead. And I know it's hard. I swear I was better at this and I don't know what happened, but there's meal planning on Instagram. It doesn't have to be extravagant. I know one lady, when we shared last time, she actually had her kids, everybody picked a day of the week where they 
at first when they were young, they just came up with the idea. Because I think a lot of that is like, what do I even make the idea? As they got older, they started researching their own recipes. They started cooking their own recipes. But even at a young age, like just ask them like, okay, pancakes and eggs, like I can do that. And so it's that coming up with the idea. But like I said, it doesn't have to be extravagant and we wanna help you guys. So we actually have a one page Trader Joe's recipes. This is like your recipe and your shopping list all in one. Done. Like, there Lots you go. Lots of easy, and like, not, You're welcome. Very, not very many ingredients. That's what I, and like, yes. that has too many ingredients, no thank you. Yeah. They're very simple. Or too many ingredients that aren't in my house. I do want to share of Christy's method, because you shared briefly. So one of, um, one of my neighbors has older kids, and so like Missy said, that they, she would have them start like picking a meal, right? So like at 10, maybe uh, like having your child pick the meal and help you cook it. So Thursdays would be like Danica's night and she gets to pick the meal and help me with it. But as they got older, she would have her kids actually cook the meal. So like this kid has Thursday, this kid has Monday, you're researching, you're going on Pinterest, you're, I'll take you to the store, right? Buy the groceries. And they actually started cooking it. And that helps them to just, you know, be good, right? Be good at that when they get out into the rest of the world. And I thought it was such a great idea, not only to teach them that, but like take a little pressure off mom when, when they get a little older, right? And they can do that. And I know some of you are out there like, I want, I really want to cook with my kids, but it's so stressful and overwhelming. So when, when my littles were young, I would put them in the high chair and I would give them like, not what I was cooking. I would give them like a measuring cup and something else. And I was like, yeah, measure that for mommy. Like it had nothing to do with what I was doing, but they felt like it did. Give them a spoon, like a mixing bowl and let them just, okay, can you mix this for mommy? They were separated, like get them separate, <laughs> like where they couldn't put their hands in it. And then as they get older, you know, and then there's so much that goes into it, but don't let that be like, don't compare to other moms. Like, you know, you see other moms, oh my gosh, she's cooking with her kids. I really want, if that's not for you, like, that's okay right now. Maybe this isn't the time of your life to do that. And if and they're then, cooking with them on Instagram, it doesn't <laughs> count because you know that like what they put on Instagram is not actually what happened. <laughs> like <laughs> so. take 99. Yeah. <laughs> like how many takes did it take for you to get that? So that's all I'm saying is, is there's other things that you're not seeing. And so do what is enjoyable. Um, pick something for them to do that doesn't overwhelm you. Because again, it goes back to that, like, I want to do all these things, but if, if you're stressed, that's what they're going to feel way more than I cooked with mom. They're not going to remember that. They're going to remember you were stressed out and frustrated. So the other thing is how we eat. Let's try not to always eat on the run. Try not to always eat in front of the television. Now, again, we're not telling you it can never, but this is just trying to just bring awareness. Like, just look at how often am I eating on the run? Treat yourself by setting the table. Like, how nice. Like, if you come to a table like that, and you guys, like, this isn't my typical table, but it does make you smile. It does bring joy. Um, set, maybe light a candle, add that music in. Try to just relax in his presence. And I promise your family is going to feel that too. So remember prayer and Thanksgiving. Summer talked about truly this is one of the times where your kids learn to pray aloud is right at the table. So Jesus said, as often as you eat, remember me. And truly, kids learn to imitate their parents' grateful hearts. And sometimes we're doing our praying, we're doing our reading our Bible, all while the kids are asleep. They don't get to see that. Try to, it's like what teachers do. They have to like put it on the outside. And I know that's not always a, something that we're aware of, but start saying things out loud more, praying out loud so they can hear what's inside of you. So <clears throat> on that subject, more is caught than taught, right? We've heard this before. Your kids, they're not going to learn from what you say, right? That's not how it works. They're going to learn from the life that you lead. So your example is their teacher. And what we want to show our kids what we value, right? And so, so many things can be learned at the table. We talked about this a little bit, but I don't know why we don't have this in that same section. We'll probably have to readjust this, but um, hospitality, responsibility, like dishes, we setting the down, table. Because we only had enough. Clearing the table. <laughs> we kinda, yeah, we do everything last minute. Um, clearing the table, setting the table, character, courage, discipline, and are all demonstrated at the table. Faith, hope, and love can be given to everyone who shares a meal at the table. Um, now we know that it could seem overwhelming, right? And we've mentioned that like a thousand times because we're moms. We know what it's like to be overwhelmed. Um, so for some of you, just remember that you're not doing this alone. You're not doing this 
on your own strength. You have to lean on God's strength for this. We have to lean on God's strength just to like get out of the house in the morning, right? (laughs) Just to be on time. My house was a little crazy. And I told my kids, I have to be nice to you this morning because I'm speaking at mop. So please just listen. (laughs) I said, I have to go there and pretend that I'm a really good mom and you're yelling at me. I don't have to pretend because we all know, right? And my kids are at an easier age. They're seven and 10. Like there's no reason they shouldn't be listening and ready by now, but it doesn't happen. Um, So, okay. So you lean on God's strength through this. Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So just remember that when you start to get overwhelmed, you're like, oh, we had another busy week and I really wanted to make it my goal to sit at the table three times and we only made it there once. Like, it's okay. Next week's a new week. Just try again. You know, it's going to take a little while. I mean, from six years ago when I sat down in that workshop and was like, oh my gosh, I'm literally that lady that they talk about in the Bible that says like your husband, like, why would your, you know that scripture? I should have, why would he come home like to a house? He'd rather like be somewhere far away. What is that scripture? Oh my gosh, I'll think of it and tell you guys later. Anyways, I was like, I'm that woman. Like, I'm her. Now, it's taken me a lot to try my very hardest to make sure that my kids and my husband enjoy coming to the dinner table when he comes home from work, all those things, right? So, but it took day by day and it took a lot of failure before it got to where it's at of being enjoyable. And not all days are enjoyable because that's life, right? It's never going to be perfect. That scripture is going to bother me now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, okay, so just try to choose one thing to improve, okay? So can you add one more meal? Can you add conversation cards in? Maybe you're already going to the table a lot. Maybe you guys eat dinner all the time at the table, or you're at the table for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Maybe your husband works at home, or you're just at the table with your kids and your husband's not there. You can still incorporate these things. And the conversation cards is, I would always recommend starting there. It just brings some fun and interest to the table. Um, so, and then minister to the other kids and had, oh, I don't know why I don't, we must have added this one in, but I can touch on this. So kind of ministering to other kids. So sometimes we are the ones who need to be ministered to, right? And then there's some times where we can bring others into our home to share what we're doing. And so if you have, you know, friend, kids at school or your, your kids, friends that you might know are not getting this at home, invite them over for a meal. You guys show them how to have fun, show them that they can have fun and it can be lighthearted and you can bring the word in. Like you can share those things with others too. So be like a light in your community, invite people to your table. For me, I've realized it's not as easy to invite adults to my table, probably because I feel like it needs to be like, my house has to be clean and all that. But like, I can easily invite all the neighborhood neighborhood kids over and make a big meal of like rice and beans and chicken and all, you know, and they love it. And they don't care what my house looks like, but I can minister and I can show to them like what it's like to sit at the table and what it's like to just have like that conversation and that fun because a lot of them aren't doing that, you know, at their houses. So I can show them what it's like at my house. So there are, are fun ways that you can incorporate others. Okay, so normally we would pause and do some more share, but this is us condensing a two hour <laughs> presentation into one hour. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of wrap up and end, and then we're gonna leave that last 15 minutes. We have one more sheet for you guys that just kind of hits on the main things that you guys can take notes, but what we'd really love is for everyone to kind of just share maybe one idea that maybe sparked from what we said, one idea that you're gonna try, maybe something you're doing and that we didn't say, and then, and then we'll say it at the very end. So maybe you had an idea that we didn't and then we can share it with the room. So everybody walks away with plenty of ideas to go home and implement. But let me just, um, should I? Yeah, I do, okay. I think that's good. Just because if anyone to has to, yeah. Okay, so we're just gonna close with this. Just a few questions. I want you guys just sit quietly and just really think about these ones. Is it possible that Jesus wants to dine at your table but he cannot because your life has become so absorbed in other things. Are you so busy going here and there that you no longer come to the table where the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord, Lords would like to join you? Is he knocking at your door, but you're too distracted to hear? Open the door, prepare your table, and allow his presence to dine with you. So we're going to pass this out, and we want to just leave you guys with time to share. We only have about 10, 12 minutes before we have to go get the kiddos. But thank you, everyone. Do you have a question? And this is maybe to everyone, because I'm, I'm new to your Belinda, but does anyone know of a, a good manners class for kids? Oh, yeah. 
summer. You had that one online. What? That etiquette one. So she asked if you have a good manners class. Summer, you found one on like etiquette and it even went over like phone etiquette. Yes, and I, I can't remember, remember where you shared that. Darn. Um, it was like, you know, modern day manners. Like instead of, you know, like, you know it? But not, yeah, like modern, like what are the things they need etiquette in? Phone etiquette, they needed, I'm gonna have to find that one. I'll, you know what, I'll even put that on the, the Mops Instagram and we'll open up, cause not everybody's here and that would be a good one to share. Okay, so go ahead and share your ideas and then if anyone has one that stand out, I'll pop around and then we'll share it before we get the kids.